Chloe, the 9.15 a.m. on the 21st of October 1966, Wales changed forever. When the Merthyr Vale number seven tip slid through the mist of the morning in a 40-foot wave and engulfed Panclass Junior School and the surrounding buildings, it had a profound effect on the community, of course, but also on the wider world. My mother was a young school teacher, pregnant with me, when she first heard the news from Abervan. It was break time in the junior school where she was teaching. The head came in and said, a school in Merthyr has collapsed. We don't know if anyone's hurt. And that's all they knew at the time. And then the full story, of course, came out during the course of the day. It affected her. Over the years, I heard a talk about Abervan. I heard a talk of teachers who had been found buried with their arms around children trying to protect them against the deluge. And when my own children were young, we went to Big Pit Mining Museum and there on display and newspaper front pages describing the disaster. And she was deeply affected then. For though she wasn't from Abervan, she was from a small mining village and she knew what the cost would be to the community. Men knew the risks of working underground. They knew the risks of a fall. They feared being engulfed by black damp. They knew the explosive power of fire damp. They knew about the risk of injury underground. The lamp rooms were full of men who bore testament to that. Many of us in our family saw the effect of the dust on the lungs of those who worked underground. Pneumoconiosis and emphysema, who took the lives of those as they aged prematurely, prematurely and were taken so young. They knew the price of coal was high, but they didn't realize that the price would be so extortionate, because who would have thought that coal could take the lives of children so suddenly and above the ground? We can't share the experience of the community of Abervan and those who lost so much. We can't share their grief because their grief is different. Their grief has been and still is played out in the full glare of the public spotlight. And this week will be difficult. Friday will be hugely difficult for so many families. But I hope I speak for all members in this chamber when I say that today we stand in solidarity with the people of Abervan, we offer them support and I hope some comfort as they deal with the memories of that day when winter darkness came early to the community of Abervan.